And so I realized, you know, as we were celebrating this holiday today, this Halloween, that we can do this not only for folks that are in our lives, for our friends and family that are here, but also like we can have the same relationship with those who may not be with us in physical form, that those who may have have passed on already, right? Like in many cultures around the world, including my culture and Japanese culture, there's this deep belief that our ancestors are still very much alive and present in our world, right? That they have transitioned from this physical plane, but they're still looking out for us. They're still comforting us. They're nourishing us. They're still keeping us in line a little bit sometimes. But they're, they're protecting us, always. There's always that feeling of protection when I think about my ancestors. And it made me think of this, this, this celebration that we're having tonight, Halloween, which has you know, gone through many iterations over time, but has its origins in the ancient festival of Samhain, which Sarah beautifully sung to in our you know, meditation this morning. And it takes place this very night, this time right between the autumn equinox and the winter solstice. It's a time to both celebrate the harvest and also prepare for entering the dark, cold winter time, a time that's often associated with death. The Celts uh, believed that on this night, the boundary between the worlds became blurred. You know, though Samhain is an ancient festival, first celebrated over 3,000 years ago by the Celts, you know, by the ninth century, the influence of Christianity had spread into Celtic lands where it eventually became supplanted by older uh, Celtic rites, or supplanted older Celtic rites. And, and by 1000 AD, the church actually made November 2nd All Souls Day, which was a day to honor the dead. And halfway across the world, right, coming out of the Mexico region, there's also another holiday that occurs on November 1st, which many of us might be a little bit more familiar with, of, of Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, Right? It's a very much less solemn holiday than All Souls Day. It's less about mourning and, and more about celebrating and, and honoring those who have, have come before, right? Those who have passed. And we do so by like telling stories and sharing in food uh, and drink and, and bringing, like really consciously bringing the energies of those who are on the other side consciously into our lives, to not be afraid of that, to welcome those energies back into our world. And Samhain has a similar kind of energy to that as well. I find like here in our American culture, like we're not very good around death. We're kind of fearful of it, I think. And so I think it's kind of a little bit weird to like be celebrating and be kind of joyful and to be brave and, and, and really bringing the energy of those who've passed on because maybe we, we, we are still developing in our American culture, our relationship. To, to death and to mourning. But I realize, right, still in the midst of that, we celebrate Halloween, even though maybe it's a, it's a shell of what it originally was, but we are celebrating this, this, this holiday. And so we have an opportunity every year uh, to take part in this belief that so many humans across time and across the world have believed that on this very night, like the veil between this world and the next is thin. It's thin. And we have greater access to those ancestral energies right now, to the wisdom and the guidance of those who have come before. And that we can not only gain access to that, but we can allow ourselves to be supported by those energies, to feel that our lives are much bigger than this little one that we're living, that, that our lives actually you know, push far back into the past and reach far out into the future. And we are like all get to be a part of that. 